Hello, I'm Simon Keefe. I'm a professor of uh, historical musicology. I'm also head of the music department at Sheffield. Um, I predominantly research music of the late 18th century, and within that context, Mozart above all, but I do many other things besides that. We have an extremely broad undergraduate program at Sheffield, one of the broadest, I think, uh, in the country, and it covers almost all sub-disciplines in music that one could imagine, so from performance and composition, historical musicology, um, uh, ethnomusicology, music psychology, music management as well, and issues in music technology. So we can cover that whole spectrum um, extremely well, which enables us to have two types of student, um, the student who comes in and would like to do uh, a broad portfolio of, 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 of musical uh, 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 teaching uh, and learning, uh, and those, of course, who would want to target uh, one particular area and follow that through. We're extremely well uh, set up in, in facilities terms here at Sheffield. Um, we combine the best, I think, of the old and the best of the new. Uh, we're in a, in a building called the Jessup Building, which is a converted old Victorian hospital. Um, but we also have the Sound House, which is a four or five year old building, uh, which is extremely uh, uh, well used by students in terms of practice facilities, in terms of uh, studios, etc. We're extremely well set up with access to a lot of different performance facilities, both in the university and also across what is a very active musical city of Sheffield. Uh, so we use Firth Hall, which is right at the heart of the university. We use a converted church called the Drama Studio. And then we have access to places like the Crucible, um, other, theater, uh, other theaters, concert venues in Sheffield, which are, which are much used by us um, and which enable us to really connect with the city and for the city to come and see what the university has to offer as well. For the most part, I teach in, the, uh, in my research uh, specialties in the late 18th century. Um, so I teach, of course, on Mozart, Mozart in Vienna. Um, but I also teach um, on biographical topics. I have a course called Fact and Fiction, Representations of Composers in Literature and on Screen. Um, and that deals with basically the fine line between fact and fiction, where it comes to uh, understanding uh, composers and their lives. Um, in addition, I supervise uh, PhD students in a number of different areas, not just in the late 18th century, but going into the 19th and 20th century uh, as well. So um, Chopin and Prokofiev are two examples that come uh, to mind, and their piano music, because I'm interested, um, broadly speaking, in, in instrumental music from 1750 onwards, even though my research specialty uh, is very much in the late 18th century. In terms of what I research specifically, um, I'm interested in intersections between various areas within the context of late 18th century research, um, predominantly reception, so the history of how particular works are understood at particular times, uh, style, uh, how that evolves over time, how it's influenced by other contexts, perhaps in my, in my uh, particular um, area, dramatic uh, influences on musical style, um, and biography as well. I'm currently working on a on a biography of Mozart. So I'm interested in, um, in the intersections of these particular areas as they pertain specifically to Mozart, but also to others in the late 18th century. I'm currently working on two projects. One is an edited collection of essays on Mozart, uh, his life and his music. Uh, my own essay in that, in, in that particular volume is on Mozart's uh, six months or so in Paris in 1778, which was a particularly uh, tumultuous period uh, for him. Um, um, I'm also working on a musical biography of Mozart in Vienna, so Mozart's the final decade of his life from 1781 to 1791. Um, and I'm particularly interested here in telling the tale of Mozart's development as a musician, both as a performer and as a composer, and how issues relating to performance influenced the music that he ultimately produced and how he's, how he's subsequently understood. We're an extremely open and friendly um, department without exception. Uh, and I think without exception too, we all take an active interest in activities that are going on beyond our own subdiscipline. So if we're a musicologist, we're still very interested in what's happening in music psychology, music technology, ethnomusicology, et cetera. And I think that's part of our unique character, really, that openness, that, friend that friendliness and straightforwardness in regard to musical activities of all kinds.